Hey everybody, it's time for part two of our breakdown of the season five premiere of Better Call Saul. We are calling it Lalo Palooza. Join me as I have a bonus basement breakdown. Do we love Lalo? I love Lalo. I think that Lalo is the perfect foil for Gus Fring here in season five. You know, one sort of storytelling problem with the Gus Fring um, character in Better Call Saul is that we know that Gus outclasses his rivals. We know that Gus has a grander vision, that he's more patient, he's less emotional than the Salamanca rivals we've seen so far, um, in particular Hector's, who I'm talking about. But Lalo is clearly here to give Fring a run for his money. And this episode sets him up as a really formidable foil mainly by showing us that Lalo can see so deeply into the world around him, and that's what makes him an even match for Fring. So let's go to this scene at the meth house. This scene comes about when Lalo detects that there's something wrong. There's some disturbance in the force of the Salamanca meth empire, right? Um, he hears that there's some trouble with the supply, and he says, Show me. He wants to see it with his own eyes, and we see why pretty quickly. When this scene starts out, watch how all the shots are obstructed. We see things through a car window, through a barely open window in the house. There's this great shot of the meth baggies sort of making their way down a pipe to the eager customer. This is a shot that doesn't make a whole lot of physical sense. We can see there's a bend at the end of the pipe, so there isn't really this long line of sight, but who cares? It's such a fun shot, and it works from a storytelling point of view, because it's showing us how everybody on the street is really viewing this operation through a very narrow lens. They only see what pertains to their part of the process. Then Lalo arrives and we get our first unobstructed wide shot of the scene. And it's a really wide shot. We're taking in the whole of this meth house because that's what Lalo's going to do. He's going to see the whole picture, right? But this is crucial. Lalo can see the tiny details too, because when he gets inside the house, the focal point is these tiny little baggies of meth, right? And two things happen while he's looking at the meth. One, the kid from downstairs is up there sort of looking over Lalo's shoulder, wondering what's going on. He's in a panic. Calm Lalo, without even turning around, says, If you're holding my cash, what are you doing up here with my stuff? Hey, if you've got my money, you shouldn't be up here with the drugs, basically, right? It's giving us, the audience, a picture of how Lalo maintains this mental image of the whole operation, even when he's fixated on this tiny baggie. It's like he has eyes in the back of his head, right? And then we get the payoff of this inspection with him looking so close and flicking the baggies. He ends up with two piles, one that he says are legitimate from their supply, and then he says, This shit's not ours, man. Well, the baggies look exactly the same to us, right? And Nacho seems pretty struck by this feat, too. Okay, so. The title of this episode is Magic Man, and that's a title that applies most directly to Saul Goodman, right? As we talked about in the last breakdown, and as Saul says himself in this episode. But I think Magic Man also applies to Lalo, and his magic is that he can see details that other people don't see. Okay, so we've established Lalo as someone who can see really deeply into the world around him, and then it's time for him to go to the Los Pollos Hermanos facility and face off face to face against Gus. I love this opening shot of the scene where, again, we have Lalo just looking, taking in the whole of the operation, and we know by now how much power there is behind that gaze. This is a really striking shot, and you can see Lalo's wheels turning. Uh, more on that in a second. Then we sit down for this meeting. I love the contrast between the wardrobes here, because look, Lalo, who can see really deeply into the world around him, is going up against Gus, who's the master of concealing what he doesn't want people to see, right? What a great contrast, these two guys. And the sequence here at the chicken facility also establishes a stylistic contrast between the two men. Gus's style is to present himself as buttoned up, conservative, careful always concealing his true criminal intentions. When Juan Bolsa talks to Lalo after this meeting, he says to Lalo, No entiendes a Gustavo. Con él, todo es negocio. 
Juan Bolsa has bought into the story that Gus is telling about himself. Lalo thinks that he sees more. At this meeting, because Gus is so vulnerable, he's playing things especially close to the vest. His wardrobe here is like ridiculously conservative. It couldn't be more gray. Gray all the way through. It's an outfit that insists nothing to see here. Now, here's Lalo in his gold shirt, as if he's an open book, on display. He has nothing to hide from anyone. Of course, he's not an open book, but this is his style. I think of these guys as like two poker players. Gus is the guy at the table who, he just looks down at his cards, he doesn't say much, he doesn't react. All business, never changes his expression, Mr. Poker Face. Lalo is the guy who plays dumb, shoots his mouth off. He's always poking and prodding and annoying his opponents around the table because that's what he does to try to get information, try to make people react and then get information from those reactions. So these are the two forces going up against each other at this meeting. And then Gus says, you wanna know what the construction project is? It would be simpler for me to show you. An echo of Lalo's line from earlier when he says, show me, now Gus is saying, I'll show you, okay? And Lalo's gonna take a pretty close look as he does. First off, how perfect is it that this is a chicken cooler, that that is the lie that Gus Fring decided to tell? Because of course it is. That's the front that Gus always presents, isn't it? Cool, calm, orderly. So the fact that he chose a chicken cooler as his lie is a little indication to the audience that Gus is feeling the heat. Right? But more to the point, I want to call your attention to this recurring image in this scene and this sound of spinning blades grinding against metal. It's the first thing we see in here in this scene. It's the last thing we see in here in this scene. And the image is just peppered throughout. This is giving us another metaphor for the Lalo and Gus conflict because I really see Gus as the steel here, cold, hard, unmovable. And Lalo is the spinning blade, loud shooting off sparks and grinding through the hard facade of that steel, right? The spinning blade against the metal is such a great image because it gives this potent physicality to the tension between Gus and Lalo right now. And it echoes the delightful performance that Tony Dalton is giving here as Lalo. Even when Lalo is still, there's still this liveliness in his eyes, this animation about his being. It's like we can see his wheels turning, right? And we have literally spinning wheels grinding against the metal here. Here. This is an image to keep in mind throughout the season. I think it really evokes the dynamic between these two characters. One last thing I want to mention as we wrap up Lalo Palooza here. The final line of this scene, Lalo says with a little wink to Gus Fring, South Wall's gonna look beautiful. Lalo keeps bringing up this South Wall detail. Why does it keep coming up? Why do we hear that line so many times in so many different versions? Well, it applies in a literal sense, right? Like Lalo wants to know what the construction project here, but South Wall, it speaks to Lalo's sense, his correct sense, that Gus is building a wall to wall off his cartel partners to the south, right? That's the real south wall that Lalo feels is being built here. He doesn't have the evidence yet, but he can smell it, right? So that remark to Gus is his way of indicating that maybe he knows more than he's letting on. So Gus is left to wonder, well, how much does Lalo really know? For that matter, the viewers are left to wonder. How much does Lalo know? A question we'll continue to ask as the season evolves. Okay, that's Lalo Palooza. Thanks so much for watching. Remember, comment below with your observations or email breakdowns at ological.net and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Tell your friends to subscribe. Tell your parents to subscribe. Tell your kids to subscribe. All right, we'll be back soon with another breakdown. Thanks for watching. So long for now. Peace.